to record this because obviously this is the material of the class. So, all right, here we go. Um, okay. Now, on the one hand, the archetype psychology is uh, imprecise, right? So she often says, well, you know, here's the archetype. Now, how he develops depends upon his parents, depends upon his culture. Um, and he might, you know, if it works out well, this will, it, this is the best. If it doesn't, this is the worst. And so I think it would be pretty confusing unless you've already been through the female ones, the goddess ones. And so I think hopefully, especially as you write your paper, you can understand that even if life is complex, even if you have to call on some of these other goddesses to achieve your goals, even if you can, the archetypes do make sense. And there tends to be one that is the one that you identify with most that started when you were a little kid and that sort of reveals itself in critical moments. Or if you have to make critical decisions and you decide to go with whatever other people expect and then it, it isn't satisfying to you over a lifetime. So that I hope that now that you've been through it all with women and you know yourself and you know some other women, you've had girlfriends, your mother, your sisters, your aunts, your cousins, that you can understand, okay, here's the guy world. Um, so that's number one. It's imprecise, but it still tells, tells a lot about life and about ourselves. So your paper, that's coming up is know thyself, right? Um, these archetypes are related to basic instinctual life. That's why when we get into a critical moment where we feel like our survival is at stake, we tend to revert back to especially these patriarchal archetypes and because they're so deep seated but they're also very distorted and wounding for men and for women. Um, the other point I wanna make that I did make last time was, this is why I think AUW is a great place for you to develop a, a woman's culture that's just women, you don't talk about men, you just reinforce each other in your positive, creative, passions, right? Then there's the culture where you talk about men. And that's, that's important too, because women need to communicate with other women about men. And also that could be a mixed group because you're trying to learn how to get along, but that's a very different conversation. And now we're talking about relationships between men, between fathers and sons. Um, and this also includes wives and sisters and all that. But it is interesting to think about how you can grow up in the same household and yet your emotional relationships to your parents and your siblings are fundamentally different. And part of it is because you're born different and part of it is because of wounding that's gone on. And it's just, you, you know, you get wounded and it just becomes the norm at home. And that, you know, that's really hard to recover from. But anyway, um, I think all of these things are interesting to think about. And then also the myths. And so we'll go back to the, I can tell you the stories of Zeus and Apollo if we still have time. But the mythological tradition was really just people adding to it, refining it. People, you know, they know about Zeus and they can figure that out. And they hear a myth about Zeus and Metis or Zeus. And then they think of their own because they can see their own pattern 
in this type of man. And so the poets will come up with another story about another relationship Zeus has. And so it's a, it's a very dynamic tradition. That's why I think it's really good when my students bring in their own mythological tradition from their backgrounds um, or their own stories. And you can bring it, uh, bring up mythological stories, but I'm not requiring you to do this because there is quite a bit of work each day. Um, the, and so, um, but the idea that myths are, they're imprecise, but that's because life is imprecise and complex. So they should remind you of, oh my gosh, I know someone like that, or okay, I'm gonna keep this myth in the back of my mind and someday I might run into people in this situation. Um, so one of the reasons I sort of got into this is I got into a basically a Greek tragedy, <laughs> right? I, I married young and you get to know, the only people you really know very well are your own family, maybe extended family, maybe a friend you've had since you were young. Yet, I had a really close friend, but I didn't really know what kind of people her parents were. They were just around, you know? And then she tells me about some of the dynamic in her house, even though I spent a lot of time at her house. Oh my goodness, you know, there's all this stuff I didn't know. But when you marry, you know, you do get to know kind of the inside story. So then there was a crisis and all four of the parents reverted back to their archetype. And it was kind of, you know, it was a bad place. Nobody would compromise. Everybody's obsessed and they've got something at stake with their point of view. And uh, it was, it was scary. <laughs> But anyway, I had, you know, my parents were Zeus and Hera and my husband's ex-husband's parents were Apollo and Artemis. And they really did follow those archetypes and they really butted heads, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so I do think that these are patterns and if you manage to get through life without ever <laughs> recognizing them, good for you, you're lucky. The rest of us just have to put up with it or figure it out. So um, the other, actually one more point is that whenever parents, uh, the psychologist said, here's a good parent for this kind of child, here's a bad parent for this kind of child. In the mind of the parent, they think they do what they do is a good thing. It's for the kid's sake. That's tragedy, right? They have good intentions or, you know, they project their own, their own uh, imbalances onto their kid or their kid triggers their own um, difficulties or mistakes that they haven't ever sort of come to terms with themselves. So in their own mind, they're being a good parent, you know, most of them. And only the psychologist has that distance. And so when the psychologist said, here's the worst kind of mother, or here's the worst kind of dad, that isn't what they think, right? They don't necessarily think that. And so that's another experience that I had is that everybody in the family system had their own point of view and so that I did start going to a therapist <laughs> because I needed somebody that was outside of the system. And that was really helpful, you know? Uh, so anyway, the Zeus type, I think we've been through this, but let's just, I'll just summarize it for a second and then we'll do the Poseidon. Uh, right from when they're little, they need to control things. The worst mother lets herself be intimidated. The worst dad makes everything into a power struggle. Uh, 
oh yeah, if if he has a successful emotionally distant father and a nurturing mother, he grows up, his father lets him inherit the company or his father has a friend who hires him. And so he gets instantly, he gets promoted to a high level, but he thinks he earned it. He thinks he deserved it. And he looks with contempt at other people. He doesn't understand how much other people suffer. And so I remember uh, when I was struggling, I was 40 before I really hit the wall. And I said to myself, show me somebody who hasn't suffered unjustly before age 40. And I'll show you somebody who doesn't understand people, right? So this would be the kind of leader who does not understand people, doesn't have empathy, doesn't have mercy, because he was given everything and his parents treated him as if he deserved it, right? Or earned it, or his dad is just, you know, helping him out, his mother is totally on board, and instantly he has way more advantages and he's totally at peace with himself. He doesn't feel any guilt or uh, am, you know, am, ambiguity about this. Um, so that that's a really big problem in American society, I know, because there are a lot of heartless billionaires. They were raised to be heartless billionaires. They were raised to believe that they earned or deserved all this power that their father gave them. And that really is killing us as a society. It, it's really unhealthy. Um, anyway, so in high school, he wants to be the leader. Um, he's a good organizer, but you know, if somebody challenges him, then there's a problem. Um, Let's see. So whenever he had a job, he's always thinking about, oh, I could run this better. I know I had some jobs in high school. I wouldn't have thought of that in a million years. <laughs> Just get out of there and get to college. Um, okay, his women have to play this role. His friendships with men are competitive. He's not very emotionally. He's emotionally uh, distant. Um, he marries up, right? He cares about the status of the woman that he marries. His children are an extension of his ego. Um, and so in midlife, he might have succeeded and he's happy and he lays up. That would be the healthy thing to sort of start giving power over. Um, or he's never satisfied and he obsesses and has to keep I mean, there are lawyers who go to the office every day in their 80s, right? They can't give it up. Um, and, or he might have not achieved what he had planned and be bitter or resentful, blame other people. Um, in the worst case, his, his kids start acting out, his wife leaves him and he's alone. Um, does he give up control? This is his big thing. And that's the story in Hesiod, if you remember. Uranus uh, did, wanted to control his children and um, he crippled them. They weren't good enough for him. They were too good for him. Then Kronos overpowers him because he's abusing his power. Then Kronos becomes the paranoid father and he doesn't want his children to challenge him, so he eats them. Again, the mother gets all upset. So I, ho I hope maybe you can understand this description a lot, you know, and see how he see its creation story is really about these abuses of power. Um, I will go back over that later too, but it is it is really interesting to see that. You know, the, the psychologist doesn't really need to have read Hesiod. <laughs> but on the other hand, the people who read Hesiod didn't know all this, you know, the discipline of psychology. 
but they had an intuitive sense, right? They understood the patterns. So there is this convergence of people who are trained to, you know, taught the patterns and, and those poets in Greece who just got it, you know, intuitively and figured out how to try and convince powerful men not to do what they might be tempted to do because it does so much damage. Um, okay. All right. So I think, um, how about, was there anybody last time who didn't give an example who would like to give an example of Zeus? So I'm going to stop for a minute and ask, let me stop the share. Who would like to give an example that didn't get a chance last time? May I, Professor? Of course. Um, so I have an example of Zeus, and that is um, Cambodian's Prime Minister, Hun Sen. And so I think that Hun Sen resembles Zeus because he always think highly of himself as he's at the top of everyone else. And he is a natural leader with like a thunderbolt in his hand, just like Zeus, because after the Khmer Rouge regime, Hun Sen comes into power and has ruled Cambodia ever since, making him the longest serving prime minister and also the president of Cambodian People's Party until today. And just like Zeus, Hun Sen does keep company with young nymphs, where he was rumored to have an affair with um, Pisa Pilika and then um, his wife, which is Bun Rani, who found out about the affair, she ordered um, two gunmen to shot down um, Pitlika. And <laughs> also, I think that Hun Sen is similar to Zeus in a way that he disproved his children who doesn't fulfill his wants and he makes sure they go into line and be disciplined just like he is. And there's an evidence of that when he disowned his adopted daughter after he found out that she was a lesbian. Oh, <laughs> well, that's amazing, Rossi. I, um, I actually, I remember last year I had a student, um, oh my gosh, uh, uh, Ratana, I think her name is. And I think she gave that same example. She was from Cambodia. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, this really sounds like it to me. Um, he's like the first guy in the public eye. Like once I read about Zeus, like I was like, that's him. Like, is he ever so going to give over power? This is the question. No, so, uh, I think he'll be like the prime minister till the day he dies. And after that, probably one of his kids will rule. I feel like it's a dicta a, a family dictatorship that's never going to end. That one day Cambodia will just end up being like Myanmar and going back to the Khmer Rouge regime. It's okay. Um, so, so he wants a dynasty, right? He wants a family dynasty, just like Zeus. Mm -hmm. And. Um, but does he have a favorite son or are those kids gonna fight for who's number one? He never expresses publicly if he has a favorite. And so I feel like three of the sons are most likely going to fight each other for power because each of them have like powerful positions in Cambodia. One has control of the military and the other one has control of like communication and like media and stuff and so they all have a powerful section that if things were going to go bad they're just going to use those ministry to like have a head start and just i feel like they're going to eat each other up for power <laughs> father have them demonstrated through all their life is power hungry and money hungry. So that's what they're going to end up becoming in the future anyway. And then also they will get a little army of followers yeah. that, that will, you know, if, if they side with one or the other, 
they will get a position of authority. And so then they'll each of each side will have this whole army of uh, followers, right? Who also have a lot at stake. Um, yeah, okay. So does everybody understand why he see it as trying to warn, <laughs> you know, the wisdom, right? He's passing on with, don't do this. Don't do this. It wrecks everything. <laughs> and they don't pay attention. Does that make sense, Rosie? Yes, Professor. Okay, does anybody else want to um, contribute? That's fascinating to me. Um, what about in uh, Indonesia? What about in Afghanistan? What about in these other places? I, I don't know. My students have to teach me these things. Nope, Bangladesh, nobody has one. Okay, so we will go to Poseidon and um, then everybody has to talk. Um, where are we? Here we go. Nope, sorry, wrong one. Professor? Yeah? Uh, before we go to the Poseidon, I have a question about Zeus. Okay. Like I read about Zeus and what I got from it was he is able to use people in the best way for his own benefit. And he expect other people to do the same rather than emotionally attack to him. However, in the Sophia conversation with the goddesses, Aphrodite blamed Hera for treat Zeus like an object and make him feel like he was being used. And that's why he doing an affair behind her. I mean, isn't this just what he expect people to do to him? Well, I mean, I gave actually, I was giving the point of view, right, of the women. Sometimes, you know, the wife of Zeus is got her own agenda, but in mm -hmm. the story, right? So this is the story about men and all that she talks about is the wife has to follow the role and he's not that emotionally involved with his wife, right? Oh, yeah. um, okay, so, so there, the other stuff is sort of a variation, right? I didn't get, she doesn't give it from the wife's point of view, right? She just gives it from the guy's point of view. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. That's makes okay, sense. because it, it's a good question, uh, but that's where, I think it is interesting to look at that list of virtues and think, well, which culture are you talking about, <laughs> right? And, and also in life, in real life, it is amazing how people have these different perspectives and they cannot communicate. Um, when it comes to the really, really deep seated stuff that oftentimes people don't talk about because it's too dangerous. <laughs> it's too passionate. But the trouble is if you don't keep flushing it out and talking about it, it will erupt. There yes. will be a crisis. There will be a crisis, right? Does that make sense to people? Yeah, that makes sense. It's like a bomb that was setting in time and someday it will be blow up. Yeah, I mean, honestly, when I was your age, I never thought about stuff like this. But what I find out is a lot of my students do think a lot more about relationships and emotions than I used to. Um, and so, you know, that's why I started teaching it. I thought, well, the students like it and I learn a lot, right? I learn a lot from this. Um, but the other thing I want to point out is that, look at, she says about, Adole childhood, adolescence, and then college. And that's all the farther you've gotten, right? <laughs> so um, so it is, so you'd actually have to pick some older person because midlife can be a huge, huge shift. And lots of times in your uh, 30s, late 30s, you don't think your life is just gonna have this huge shift. I sure didn't think that. Uh, but for a lot of people, it does happen. 
And then later on, how do you deal with aging? And I'm finding, I think it's great. Oh boy, this is my favorite <laughs> for lots of reasons. But um, anyway, there are big shifts. And you might know that in your parents or your grandparents, actually, you might be able to see it better. Again, I didn't know anything about my grandparents or my aunts and uncles, so I don't know that, but a lot of my students know a lot more than I ever knew. Um, and then to see like a number of my students say that their grandmothers were much more strict about following norms, but now with their granddaughters, they're changing their mind, right? And so they're growing. The best ones aren't saying, oh, I wish I had what you have, you know, they're just happy for you, right? But hopefully they are going through a big shift in consciousness. And uh, so, because they want their granddaughters to flourish. Um, but anyway, just so you recognize that there are these big shifts that occur in life. Um, okay, so let's do Poseidon. Um, I don't know if you know little kids, but this would be the little boy who's extroverted, he can't sit still, um, he's spontaneous, um, and there's nothing really wrong with that. It's just that a good parent is going to have to find some way to help this kid channel his emotions, not feel guilty for who he is, but he does have to go to school, he does have to plan ahead, and just let him know that really, you do have to do this, but when you're home, you can be yourself. We're not going to be, we're not going to criticize you for being spontaneous. Um, you, if you like uh, water sports, right? You might like water sports. You might like something where you, you might like artwork. You might like drama. Uh, I used to do some theater and there were the men in theater were often different, right? They weren't Apollo or Zeus. They, they had emotions and drama was their way of releasing that. Um, so um, I do remember when I was a mom, I really enjoyed watching my kids become themselves. That was my favorite thing. And they were different. Um, I remember knowing my oldest one was Athena, as I've said, and my number one priority was to let her be herself. This was, I hadn't even read any of this stuff. Um, but yeah, it was really important to me because both of her parents were introverted. She was extroverted. I didn't want her ever to feel bad about that. So, you know, you can understand that in a patriarchy, where the neighbors are all going to love you if your son is Zeus or Apollo, what do you do if your kid is Poseidon or Hades or Dionysus or, you know, one of the other ones? Um, and that that's hard. You just can't worry about the neighbors, I guess. You have to um, communicate with your child that it's okay to be yourself. Um, it's just that you know, you also have to survive. <laughs> so um, some families are a lot more emotionally expressive than others. Um, he needs to be able to cry, which is really important, you know, boys aren't allowed to cry. And so their emotions can just erupt because they've been so repressed uh, or to act silly. Um, then he is, you know, he chases after women. He he's emotional, and so he can. He has to be careful about sexual abuse. Um, he has to find work that matters to him, that can still get a decent wage. And this is another thing about in my country. I think the still the worst animosity, even though nobody admits it is between wealthy white men who are Zeus and Apollo and white working class men who are more like Poseidon or um, Hades. And their jobs are 
paying less and less. And so they can't be respectable citizens because of this huge gap and this uh, shrinking middle class. So if they could get a middle class job and be themselves and be fathers and play the role, but it's becoming almost impossible. And that's really, really hard on people. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, women, he tends to, yeah, he should work with nature. Like we have guys on the grounds crew here at school, right? And they just want to be outside. One of them told me he had an engineering degree. He used to go to the office. He can't stand it. So now he's out driving his little, you know, car going and raking leaves and he's just happy, happy camper, you know? Um, so he tends to dominate women. And so that's what his marriage would be like. Um, he's, he's not, um, he doesn't use men the way Zeus does, um, but he, and he tends to be loyal to his friends. He just doesn't have that many. Um, he tends to be a stud. <laughs> um, and he, it, the difference between a woman as a sex object and falling in love with someone means he would actually want to figure out how to relate to her and provide for her. And, but he can, if he can't provide because he, the jobs he would want don't pay, he can really, you know, go into a bad place. Um, then his children, if he's emotionally responsive, could be really good dad, but he also could be a really bad one. If he erupts um, and he, if he's too volatile and the children are just afraid of him, um, then he could have this major crisis in midlife. Um, he tends to do well as a poet, composer, um, drama, that kind of stuff, or as a psychologist, right? Um, his instability, his difficulty is he's too in, unstable. So he has to be careful. He has to be careful about taking revenge on people or being obsessive about someone who hurts his own kids, tends to have low self-esteem because he doesn't fit the Zeus Apollo mold. And that's hard on men. Okay, so now everybody gives their example. So Jareen, did you have an example? Did you call out my name, Professor? Yep. Oh, I would like to pass. Professor, I'm sorry, I'm very sick. Oh, okay. Okay. I think you've told me that then. But, uh, you know, I will call on students and then they just make their judgment. It's fine. Okay, Rossi, did you have one? Yes, Professor. Okay. Um, for Poseidon, I chose to talk about my uncle. And, and my uncle grows up in a family that is very emotionless, I would say. Like, my grandfather doesn't want his children or grandchildren to show off their emotions. And so they have to put up this really thick face in front of them where they hide their emotions behind. And I think that has a really bad effect for my uncle when he be when he's married, where like he becomes so emotional at times when his wife thought he had an affair and he couldn't put up with that feeling that he, there's a breaking point for him and he started having this bad impact on his children and his wife when he started screaming and like, it's not used to be like him. And so they took it negatively and it really impacted them. And one thing that, one more thing that I thought he's really like Poseidon is that he is very athletic back in the days. Like he always showed me pictures of him and he would um, like have race in the river with the kids and he always wow. went really athletic and his joyful water also um makes him took a job as a fisherman and so he worked on in the Tunle Sap Lake for so many years 
from during his teenage life until like Khmer Rouge hit and then he started to change his profession after that. What did he become? Um, now he works as the manager at a construction company. Well, he really fits it amazingly, doesn't he, Rossi? It, it is amazing to me when students tell me this. I go, wow. <laughs> Again, I, didn't, I don't know any uncles, aunts, or grandparents, so this is so amazing. Um, all right, so I guess I'm so curious to know what the other students think, but I'm sure we'd run out of time. But please write your comments in your post, right? If you want to say, oh yeah, Rossi, I'm from Cambodia too. And oh my gosh, that's so true. Or, you know, just whatever you want to say, but may, do as many comments as you want because you want to be learning from each other. Okay, Fahima, do you have something? She often has connectivity issues, so. The Taliban <laughs> does a job on her, I think. Okay, Untari, what have you got? Professor, I'm going to pass for the Poseidon. Okay. Do you have something later on for um, Hades? Hades yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, Louis? Oh, I think she said she wasn't feeling good. I can't remember. Um, Louis, did you have something? Okay, Madeline. Alrighty, so I chose Freddie Mercury. Um, he's like the lead singer off of Queen. And so he's like very flamboyant. Uh, he's gay. He's also very emotional and because of today's societies and during that time, it wasn't very normal for a guy to be, you know, have that personality. And um, uh, he also kind of used music for that outlet to show that uh, that emotional side of himself. So that's who I. Okay. Would you say he's Poseidon rather than Hades? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you know why? he's more of an extrovert he was very like he he wasn't necessarily like trying to hide his personality but i don't know <laughs> no no that's great i wasn't doubting it i just um wanted to make sure you know you make all those distinctions especially if you're gay when it's not accepted that can go into a hades thing pretty fast right so the fact that he you know was extroverted and okay with it would definitely make him a poseidon does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, May, what you got? Yeah, actually, I also have one um, gay friend, and he, he is like my best friend now. Um, because he's gay, he is not like accepted by many people. Um, in, I think that he is also very emotional and spontaneous and extroverted. Um, and sometimes because of because he's too spontaneous, there are some of the consequences. But what I like about him is that what he do, even when it's spontaneous, it comes from his good intention to protect himself and other people. For example, when he was a child, like when he was in primary school, because uh, one another male friend, I offended him and also LGBT community. He had he had used like violence to hurt him so that um, his mother even need to come to um, the school to meet the council and stuff. But actually, um, he's always fighting for good things. For example, he fought for gender equality and he also tried to bring sex education to my country because um, sex is actually still a taboo in my country and not many people wanted to assess it, but he always tried to bring it to my country. Um, and also he really support me in every aspect. He doesn't want like patriarchal society to like prevent me from pursuing my dreams and stuff. So yeah, um, he's 
very spontaneous, extroverted, and sometimes he doesn't think about the consequences for his action, but everything he fights for is from a very good intention. So that's why he's my best friend. Yes. Okay, so he's your vision carrier too, right? Yeah, correct. There are a lot of women who have uh, gay men who are their best friends because it doesn't have all that innuendo, right? You can just, you can have a really close relationship and it's not going to go sexual. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think um, you have a lot of gay of friends. I do. And most of my best friends are gay. And so I feel like they support you to the maximum. Like they give it their all and they didn't, they don't get jealous of you or like anything like if you fall, they'll make sure like they'll make sure like you stand back up. And like I feel like for like a straight guys, like I don't mean to say something bad. I feel like if like for straight guys, like they try to seek benefit from you and like in this patriarchal world, like if they see you down, they'll step on you and use you as like a staircase to get to where they want. But as for like gay friends, they they don't care about that. Like when you fall, like they have both hands around you and make sure that you stand back up to your place. And that is something unique and something that I always admire in all of my gay friends. Yeah, it's kind of sad, right? That the Zeus Apollo thing is so deeply embedded that it, I mean, on the one hand, it's hard for a guy not to do it, but on the other hand, he gets so rewarded for it. He doesn't necessarily think there's anything wrong with it, uh, right? So it's just sad. Um, uh, also, professor, yeah. I, I, yeah. Actually, I also want to share this, um, the kind of similar thing to Rashi, but in my country, I feel that um, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, like because my guy friends, for example, because they are also, like not accepted by the society and they have to suffer from a lot of things so they kind of understand the feeling women have and girls have so we are kind of try, trying the best to support each other but for straight men i think that for example my my brother even when he is aware that women are mistreated and under underestimated but because he's men and he received a lot of uh, privilege from society so he refused to fight for gender equality or stuff because he is the one who received the privilege so there's nothing like he needs to fight for but for like guy friends like because um he's not accepted and he could understand my feelings very deeply so we kind of have more like deep connection so i just want to share that yeah it's, I mean, it's so amazing that it's all over the world, even in small town Arkansas, it's like that. So that's what I think is really cool. <laughs> okay, Mar Margia, do you have something? Okay, um, what about Poppy? Yeah, Professor, I have one friend and uh, <clears throat> she is also a very emotional girl and uh, uh, her, her religious is lower classes. Uh, in that religious has a, you know, that sexual harassment. So they need to uh, dancing with the boys or something like that. And she don't like this kind of things. Uh, and now she uh, she is still not get married and their uh, <clears throat> their community people are uh, thinking that uh, these guys is not good uh, yeah okay so how does that follow the archetype yeah i think it's uh, some kind of related in archetype it's poseidon Yes, professor. Okay, I just, I didn't follow it, but that's okay. You can write about it in your post. That's okay. Professor. Okay, Asbina, do you have something?
Okay, so from now on, really, you need to at least turn your microphone on because I don't know. Yeah, you can write it in the chat box, yes. So Margia also, I don't know if you're there. So please write it in the chat box because otherwise I can think, you know, that you walked away from the computer. I mean, I, I assume the best, but you have to somehow communicate to me that you're there, right? That's that's all I'm asking. Um, so, Bondona? Please communicate. Let me know at least that you're there. If you're going to pass, that's fine. OK, doesn't look good. Uh, oh, I'm writing in the chat. OK, so. All right, I'm going to wait for the chat box till I get through the uh, people I see here, and then I'll go to the chat box. Okay, Rupia. Do you have something? Al, our one guy. Okay, Al, give us the guy point of view. Uh, reading the, the Poseidon chapter was a little bit of a gut punch because it was like, uh, it was like reading like an astrology profile, but everything hit the mark for me. Um, I don't know. Was, uh, I just resonated personally a lot with Poseidon and, uh, the whole thing with, uh, what sort of work befits a Poseidon where it's more of a fulfilling work, not so much like an office job, um, the school troubles, which I, I've had before, because school has, it's it's a little tough to prioritize school when other things are going on, you know, um, it, it was just really, I, I, would, I would read it, and I, I just had to sit down for a little bit, because it, it, it just kind of, it felt like me. Okay, I, we, we're going to do all of them, and by the end, you know, you can actually, you can wait to write your paper <laughs> until you get to the end of that. And then you can write on who am I? Um, your midterm grade will probably be kind of low, but it's okay with me if you wait. Um, but I would say from what I know about Al and my other classes that, yeah, he's not a Zeus Apollo, right? And so, but Al is really smart and he's really thoughtful. It's just a question of how to find a slot <laughs> in this society, because this society is really tough on people. Um, and it's tough on men in one way, it's tough on women in another way. But it, you know, it's, it's the Procrustean bed, this bed you have to lie in. And if you're too big, they'll cut you off. And if you're too short, they'll stretch your body, you know, it's just sad. But anyway, Good, Al. And I do think it's different than astronomy, uh, astrology, right? Because oh, no, definitely. It was just like an example. It was just an no, example. No, no, I understand, Al. And sometimes there are people who think that archetypal psychology is as legitimate as astrology. Honestly, the, a lot of psychologists don't accept it. But I mean, I can't tell myself I don't have the dreams that I have, you know? I mean... <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of lives those people have, but anyway, I, that is a, a good point. That is a point I wanted to make anyway. Um, News Rot, what have you got? Do you have something? Okay, she's going to pass. All right. Uh, Nahida. Do you have something? Professor, uh, so I have a friend uh, who was very uh, emotional. When uh, he had a breakup with his girlfriend, and he was attempted to suicide. Actually, uh, it was it was very disappointing for everyone. But uh, he was such an emotional emotional situation that uh, he attempted to he did not fear to death to die. But uh, other than that, she's he's very friendly. And everyone really fond of him. And even I also like him personally. Okay. Yeah, that is, those things are very unnerving. 
Um, and then you know you need to dig out the stuff that's going on under the surface and figure out the persona and all that stuff. Okay, Lakin, have you got something? No, I'm gonna skip. Okay, um, Rook nine. Okay, DT, do you have something? Okay, and Claire. Um, yes, mine's kind of similar to other people's. It's a lifelong friend of mine from kindergarten up. <laughs> We're still friends to this day. Um, he's always been noticeably like his emotions are very hot and they were when we were younger and they stayed steadily there from elementary to high school, especially a, a bit more leveled out now just because he's in more control of his emotions, but still they're heightened. Um, the other male classmates, like they didn't understand where he came from a lot of the time and even authority figures would be baffled by his reactions to things um, when it was just his emotions showing through that most other males didn't have, honestly. Um, like I said, now in our older, in our college years, he's gotten more of a rain on it, but still when something strikes him wrong in whichever emotion it may hit, um, there's definitely, he can't get past it. It's harder for him to see past it but he's the best friend, like everyone said, um, kind of that archetype makes for a very good friend. Do you think he'll find a job that that is satisfying to him? I think so, but I do think it will have to be within a realm that allows him to be a bit more himself. I don't, I don't know how to explain that, but you know what I mean? Oh, like not, right. not such a structured thing right. that he can't express himself. Yeah. Not an office job. Do his parents expect him to, you know, do the career office? Left? You know, I honestly think he is pursuing more of an office job style. I think that's because of just norms, maybe not necessarily his parents pushing him to that, but maybe just kind of social norms of what makes the most money and will be an economic success rather than his own personal success. Okay, well, I mean, you can see how his life trajectory goes. It'd be interesting. Yeah. Um, so the next one is Hades. Um, oh, I, I need to go to the chat box. Um, Okay, so Louis, oh, she's sick, okay. Um, let's see. Okay, okay, so I guess I'll move on to Hades because um, we're gonna run out of time. So anybody who wants to pass can pass, but don't pass if you have something. We'll just do what we can do and we'll again catch up next time. Uh, Jereen, did you have something on Hades? No, Professor. Okay. Um, maybe I'll do a screen share just to remind you, just to, you know, sort of summarize it. Hades was introverted as opposed to Poseidon. Uh, he reacts differently. People think he's weird. Um, and again, the parents need to recognize that he's his own self not try to mold him. If his father is an extrovert, it's going to be big trouble. Um, he's just ashamed of his son. Remember like Uranus had those monsters and he was embarrassed by them. Um, and that's just terrible. It's not their fault. Um, so you'd have to let him be alone. Uh, and also actually parents have to help him adapt, but they can just say, look, uh, you can be yourself. I like you as you are, but as your parent, I need to sort of make sure that you learn how to function in the world, right? Um, 
So he, again, he needs to find an occupation that can keep him connected. Uh, filmmaking, depth psychology, literature, um, hospice work with dying people, you know, that could be meaningful to him. Um, usually he's not very successful <laughs> with women. Um, so a woman would have to really understand him, accept him for who he is, kind of be a mediator between him and the world. Um, he's a loner. He tends toward being a loner, which is okay as long as he doesn't fall into depression. Um, he could be celibate, um, but he could also be sexually aggressive because he doesn't know how to relate to women. So he just gets frustrated and then, you know, goes to an extreme. Um, he wants stability, but again, he has that problem. He can't get a job that makes a decent living, which I, I, it just makes me grieve. The, um, the minimum wage in my country hasn't changed for 25 years. And again, the standard of life in America is good, but these are the kind of guys these days that are substantially poorer than their grandfathers. Okay, and that, that's a big problem. So it's downward mobility. Um, and if, I mean, if they get blamed for it, that's a big problem because it isn't their fault. Um, if their father is firm, humorless, uh, as a father, right? Uh, he, <laughs> he's gonna be a work in progress, right? He can't really help his kids succeed. He's not very emotionally expressive. He wants ordered, uh, but at best, he could communicate to his kids that he loves them, even though he can't guide them. And they can, if they function fine without him, they can just love him for who he is. Um, so he wouldn't compete with them like Zeus or Apollo might if he just makes sure and affirms them for being different than him. Um, so some of them become academics. They just fade into their intellectual life. Um, I, I run into these guys sometimes and if they get their egos caught up in it, it's really bad. <laughs> uh, you can't, you know, they just have so much on the line. But yeah, sometimes to me, when they get so reclusive, they're making distinctions that have nothing to do with, with living a life. And I, I get annoyed by it, but um, you know, it is what it is. Um, then later on in life, uh, people tend to just becoming more and more of what they are, already were. Um, for me, a lot of women that's not true for because women have so much had to conform and so later in life, they suddenly can be themselves um, in a, at a level they couldn't before. Um, so he has difficulties. And then if he's lucky, he can find a partner that actually likes him. <laughs> but he shouldn't rape and abduct somebody, right? Um, he needs to learn how to develop a persona. That was true of Hestia also. She needs to learn how to function and have a persona. Okay, so uh, who came up with it? Let's see. Jereen, did you say you wanted to have an example of Hades or not? I can't remember. No, Professor. Okay, what about you, Rossi? Did you find something? Um, I do, actually, and it's a close friend, a friend of mine who with me. I knew him through an MUN conference four years ago and we have been really close since then and I feel like he fits the description of um, Hades because he is gay and because he is gay in Cambodia people didn't allow him to express himself and so he is locked within his own shell and every day he always talks to me about how scared he is to go out whenever he's in Cambodia. Like now he's in the Netherlands, but every every time he comes home, he's always stuck inside his room. Like he's afraid to show out 
to show up in like the public area because people will have this weird stares at him thinking that he is weird and it's the same with his parents too like his parents would tear it up the last time he opened up to them that he's gay i was there along with his two other friends from the netherlands his parents teared up because they thought that they are a high-ranking family too like his father is the governor of the province why is his why is their child like this why is he different like they couldn't put up with the truth that he is gay and i love him for being like that but his parents are embarrassed because of him like they have a lot of like high ranking officials that they know of and so if they feel like if those people knew that city is gay like they will lose their face and that is really traumatizing for him in a way but dance has helped him escape and dance has helped him be in his own world where he doesn't have to face those people and what his parents think of him and he always kind of joked that he has two other brothers they can um transform themselves to fit their family's needs and wants he said that he'll just escape and be himself and he said that being away in the netherlands has helped him like cut ties with all the negativity and sometimes rise up, up from the underworld too did, did you say dance is his release yeah yes oh wow that's amazing <laughs> really that's incredible it's okay fun watching that definitely follows the archetype he's more introverted right um okay fahima do you have something nope. um untari Yes, Professor. Okay. Yeah, um, my example of hate is from my personal view is my friend in junior high school. His name is Imran, and he is one of my friends that touched my attention at that time because his unusual way of thinking. He always sees things from a different perspective than mine when we commenting on something, and it's very interesting. At first, I don't know if he is being alone because he is bullied or he is just an introvert. Turns out it was because he enjoyed being alone. But in fact, he is also only has a few friends. So he is basically an introvert. Uh, it's because not many children can accept his different mindset because it's not fun to playing with a person who doesn't support your argument when we are children we are basically searching for a friend that can be our supporter right and we are creating our own game um also i remember that he was a person who was very awkward with the new people and often stuttered when speaking in front of new people or in public he is also not the type of man who loves to do manly things for me and for me he is a little bit feminine, but he has never told me about his sexuality, either he is gay or not. But it's not like I found it disturbing or something, and that's why, and that's how I relate him with Hades. Okay, good. Um, so, Louis, I think you're going to pass, right? You said you were sick. Um, Madeline? Alrighty, so the person that I chose for Hades is a faceless YouTuber, and his name is Corpse Husband. He creates music as well. Um, he's uh, He has very low self-esteem, which is why he kind of secludes his face off the internet and stuff. Um, he's very introverted. Um, he only, he never like, he really secludes himself, he considers himself a loner. Um, he doesn't come out of his house unless he like really needs to for like groceries and stuff. Um, he doesn't have many friends, even though he like plays uh, like certain games with people. He still like doesn't really consider them friends. He doesn't really have close friends, so that's who I chose. Okay, good. Um, May. 
uh, I think my story is similar to what Rashi said. It's also about another guy friend I have. Um, he is currently in high school, but um, he couldn't like fit in the his school or even family. So he's kind of just living in his inner world, and he's very introverted. Um, it's mainly because he doesn't like get acceptance from like other people, but also um. Unlike Rashi's friend, he doesn't have the courage um, to come out with his parents that he's gay now uh, because he could see a lot of stereotypes people have towards gay. So he's kind of afraid. And also he feels that if um, in the future he could be successful with his career and stuff, he could do that. Um, because now if he come he comes out with like friends and family, he, he would be very vulnerable before in front of like um, many people. So, but because he's introverted, um, he also tries to express his feeling to another emotional outlet, for example, writing and also filmmaking. He wants to become a filmmaker in the future. And I think it's really cool. Um, he, he watches a lot of film and he, um, he kind of tried to know how the directors and filmmakers like convey the messages to different films and different stories. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing him like entering the filmmaking in industry in the future and maybe conveying some messages to protect the LGBT community and also trying to change people's like perspective about gay and like lesbian people kind of stuff. Yeah, so that's my story. Very good. It is amazing, isn't it? You read about it and they should be in film making and then you go, oh, that's my friend. <laughs> okay. Margia, do you have something? Okay, Poppy. No, Professor, not yet. Okay, has been up. Bondona? Uh, professor, uh, like, I have an example, like, uh, like in India, transgender are like now under, uh, means like trans uh, transgender people have the right to uh, like do their, uh, like live like a human and they have every right as like all the women and like uh, male have in the, uh, have their rights. So like, uh, in my play, uh, not in my in my state, uh, like uh, uh, there, there was a guy like uh, he is like newly appointed as a, a police ins inspector in like Guwahati means like in the upper part of my state, and like uh, uh, before like he became a uh, police officer. He was very like ill treated by like his family. Like at the very age, uh, early age, at the age of sixteen, uh, his father like he was scolding his mother like why uh, you have given uh, like uh, born to a child who is very different from a human. Uh, like uh, go take your child and go wherever you uh, wanted to go, but do not come back. Uh, come here or. Uh, come back here then uh, like what it uh, what happened when the child like when the child heard it like he ran out uh, from the home and like uh, he was living in uh, beside like in the roadside like uh, the people from same transgender people they saw him and like they took him to their community and like after when he was in the community he became uh, Uh, he uh, he did all sort of thing like you people are like just irritating they have said all sorts of non nonsense things to them but like uh, the guy studied and like uh, and he worked hard now like as the rule have passed and that every transgender will get their equal right as uh, the other human get so now he he means the guy has been appointed as Indian uh, uh, means police inspector and he is serving the nations. That's a great story. Um, I know that Hinduism has a tradition of the third sex that they, right? Yes. Yeah, they've yes. understood that. Um, I know in Indonesia, there's a, 
there's a trend uh, non-binary community uh, and it's more accepted. So, and that comes from the Hindu, I think, influence. Yes, that's, that's a great story. Uh, Rupia. Okay. Um, let's see, Al. Uh, I actually grew up with a uh, with a really close friend of mine that I, I still talk to today. He's going to school in, in Duke now, but um, grow, uh, he's from Venezuela and he was born over there. So um, growing up in Miami, it was a little different. Um, it's it's easier growing up in Miami as someone from a Hispanic country than like anywhere else in the United States, but it's still a little bit different because it still is America. Um, and he was kind of like a non-traditional kind of guy. He, uh, he was very introverted. He had long hair. He was really into music and playing guitar and that sort of stuff. Um, but what really resonated with me is that even though he was kind of like introverted on the sidelines, he was, uh, he was the good counselor. So he was someone that even though he didn't have like a lot of close friends, people trusted him, trusted him for advice and things like that. Cause he, he just kind of had his stuff together, even though he was left by the wayside by most people. It would be nice if he could be a counselor, you know? Um, yeah. He's, he's been doing like a, like student teaching stuff at Duke. Uh, what his big thing was he wanted to leave the country eventually and study abroad because he kind of never felt at home over here and he wanted to go over to Germany and just kind of further his studies because they kind of, he kind of got not pigeonholed into it, but he kind of grew up solitary and, you know, it's a lot easier to go somewhere else and further yourself when you don't really have that many attachments. Right. I mean, the best counselors have to have empathy, right? With people who are in a dark place. So the counselor has to have gotten out of the dark place, right? But still, you know, you'd much rather have someone that has empathy. Um, so that's good. That, that's a good story, Al. Okay, as Bina wanted to say something, Is it that you, Espina, would you like to speak? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'll, I'll check your chat. Again, I checked the chats, but I don't, I think they're coming in privately to me or something. Uh, News Rot, do you have something? Okay, Lakin, do you have something? Yes, so I have a close friend named Colton, and he's very introverted and creative also. So he um, he does cosplay, and he's going to school to become an animator. But yeah, he's also more towards that dark side of Hades and that he's almost too withdrawn, and he fights with his family, and... Yeah, especially like his father figures and he suffers from depression. You think his father wanted him to fit a more traditional mold? Definitely. Like he said that in elementary school, he had to do football and he hated it. And now he has a, a stepfather that he doesn't like either, which is he was a Marine and like a very traditional man and they just do not get along. No, uh-uh, not a Marine, uh-uh. <laughs> Unless he's a different kind of Marine. Oh boy, yeah. that's that's hard. Um, yeah, too bad he can't like leave the country and try something else. <laughs> uh, anyway, Rook9, do you have something? Okay, DT? I'm going to just, I'm going to keep going here because again, we're going to run out of time. So, um, oh, I sent it to you only mistakenly. Okay. Um, Claire, do you have something? I actually haven't come up with an example for this one yet. Okay. Uh, Rossi. Did I already call on you? Yes, I was like one of the first person. To yeah, that's that. what I thought. I don't, somehow the 
you know, the box has got, yeah, Rossi, I have all these notes. What about Nahida? Did I call on you already? Nahida, are you there? Okay. Yes, yes, sir. So, uh, I, yes, I have one of my classmates uh, who is uh, known as humorist. Actually, he could make people laugh easily. Uh, it was it was uh, very good characters. I, I I like it. And also another thing is he was very sh short tempered and tried to establish her own. So there is some things uh, different characteristics among him uh, him, and that makes him weird. And sometimes she was introvert as well. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. I need to go to the chat here. Oh dear. Okay. Um, Asbina, talk. Okay, the dark side about Hades. He kidnapped Persephone. There's a guy named Manish who was arrested last year for kidnapping a 14-year-old girl named Rita uh, when she was returning from school. Uh, he kidnapped her not for the money or to kill her, but because he was in love with her. Uh, he kept her for three years in his house. The police were searching, but they couldn't trace her. Uh, he kept her like a princess. According to, he provided her all the facilities, dresses, cosmetics. She tried to run away, but couldn't. Not until uh, she called the police when he went to buy groceries. And he was jailed for 10 years for kidnapping. Um, he, she told him that he never sexually assaulted her, but he tried to convince her to stay. Okay. Um, that, that's interesting. Yeah, I think that, I think that fits. Uh, Hades, yes. Um, okay, so Antari. Um, it's about uh, both Zeus and Poseidon forced women sexually repeatedly, yet it was Hades who got the bad reputation and being getting labeled and the others got away with it. Well, yeah, not only that, but Apollo too. Um, not only that, Apollo took revenge, like Apollo is a total jerk. But <laughs> anyway, all right, so let's go to Apollo. Apollo, the one everybody loves, right? Except underneath that, he ain't so perfect either. Um, Jareen, do you have an Apollo example? No, Professor. Okay, uh, what about Fahima? Do you have one? Oh yeah, she probably has connective issues. Uh, Untari? No, Professor, I don't have any example of Apollo. Oh, really? <laughs> I thought you all would because he's sort of, you know, the star of the show. No, like he is too oh, perfect in the, in the surface. Yeah, okay. Uh, Louis, are, you're still, you're sick. Um, and that's fine. Um, Madeline, do you have one? It was actually really difficult for me to come <laughs> up with one, so I'm gonna have to pass. Okay, that's that's surprising to me. I mean, I, I'm in philosophy, so oh my god, they're all Apollos. Uh, and I, you know, <laughs> because I'm Hestia, I'm supposed to avoid Apollo. Oh boy, I picked the wrong profession, but anyway, May, what have you got? Actually, it's also hard for me too, so I prefer to keep, keep this one. You don't have any of those boys that uh, everybody loves and they're... <laughs> Not really. I think for me, um, my new friends are very like, I don't know, they are often gay and they are very like unique in their own way. So not everyone like loves them, but I love them in their own way. Okay, very good. Again, this just reveals that I spend too much time with professional philosophers. They're all the same. Uh, anyway, Margia, have you got something? She's not there. Okay, Margia, unless you let me know that you're there, 
I'm going to assume you just turned on your machine and walked away. I mean, I don't like to assume that, but you've got to somehow communicate to me that you're there. Uh, Poppy? Uh, yeah, Professor. Do you have an Apollo? Not Professor. Okay. Bondona? No, Professor. Okay. Rupia? All right. Um, so it's possible that you didn't read this far, right? If next time you do read, you do get the assignment done, if that's really the problem, that's fine. Um, also next time, since there are so few, you could try to think a little harder. I think it's really interesting because um, it seems like a lot of the students at AUW are high achievers and they, they aren't. I mean, the Apollo would be the other kid in your class who's as smart as you and, you know, driven like you and got a plan and went to college. But anyway, that's fine. I think it's great. Um, Al, do you have something? Uh, I have a buddy of mine that I used to wrestle with. Um, that he reminds me of like the Apollo archetype because he was very well liked. He had like this, uh, this disposition that was like super friendly. No one really had any issue with him. Very popular kind of guy. But, um, and he was a very talented wrestler too. Uh, he, he went off to um, Upper Iowa University and he wrestled for them and then did pretty well, but his grades started falling apart. And then he didn't really try as hard as he used to um, uh, when it came to the practice and stuff. And uh, he went back to Miami and he's, he's doing well for himself, but not as well as he could be. So it kind of, um, uh, the one part where it's talking about the Apollos that they're not usually the most, they can be successful, but they're not the most successful because they don't have that drive behind it. They're, they're naturally good. They have these natural um, uh, talents and they just don't have the oomph to follow through on them. Okay, very good, Al. Uh, News Rot. Okay, Lakin. Um, so I would say my brother is an Apollo, like he, he's always been very driven, but there's always been something there that distracted him. So like in high school, it was girls that he just kind of let his grades slip because of that. But then later on, I don't know what it was, but he just, he stopped going to college, even though he really wanted to be a teacher. And now he works for my dad, but yeah, he's who I thought of. Hmm. Well, usually Apollo, um, you know, plays the game for quite a while, but uh, Rook9, do you have something? Maybe we will get through. DT, do you have something? Okay, um, Claire. Um, yes, I did. I actually recognized a lot of Apollo <laughs> archetypes that- Yes, um, if you work I, in a bank. <laughs> Yeah, I think that they're pretty much everywhere and definitely a lot of that archetype in the, even the small town I grew up in, maybe not so much as the professional um, stance of it with like the corporations and things like that, but still the same attitude. My example was actually someone that I dated for several years. Um, I don't know that I would have said this about him while dating him, but maybe after some reflection, I do see a lot of these qualities. Um, the Definitely the drive and the ability to be very good at everything, but that definitely led to some narcissism <laughs> <laughs> pretty quickly and also criticism of others because he was so naturally good at things. 
And then um, I would definitely see the lack of communication skills and the compassionate side of life that he wasn't really a draw for him. He was too focused on other things, you know. Um, so I definitely think he was a good fit for it. There were a lot of other comparisons I had, but that was the main part. And very likable social attitude that everyone liked and drew to. Did you, were you the one that broke up? No, that's why I was saying that I probably would not have said this without the self-reflection of some of his qualities after. Okay. Yeah. If you'd been the one, he might have taken revenge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know, actually, I know a really famous Plato scholar whose love life is just a mess. And he was telling me, you know, his wife left him and he took revenge by going and having affairs with a number of women just to get back at women. And like, he's a famous Plato scholar. Oh my God. Anyway, uh, Rossi, what do you think? Do you have one? Yes, I do actually. And um, actually there's a lot of Apollo guys in my life. Yeah. And <laughs> one person that I wanna bring up, you might, knew him I talked about his family situation um Nippon is also a close friend of mine and I really think that he fits into the Apollo archetype because damn everyone likes him like he's like that guy in high school where everyone knows about him and he has this Facebook page uh where it's called um Nippon Tutor um Nupon tutoring um, time. And so in this page, he'll post um, different scholarship opportunities. And he also has like sessions where he mentors students through different scholarship process or um, mock interviews to help them be prepared. And so I feel like everyone here knows him and is like, approving of him as like that guy and I feel like he really fits into a polo he does fit and then his dad is all over him anyway terrible yeah like it's yeah that's a Zeus Apollo that's classic um okay so Nahida did you have something and Aspina okay so uh, I guess we did get through. We only have three minutes left. Okay, Bondona says, I have an uncle, very hardworking, uh, does his work sincerely, but whenever someone says something bad about him, he cries like anything and does all sorts of nonsense things. Okay, can't take criticism. Another uncle is very responsible. When his only brother passed away, became the head of the brother's family but he hasn't married yet because he broke up with his girlfriend at his early age. Um, corpse? <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Um, uh, okay, let's see. All right, let me see. Um, all right, so my, what is, what is the wrap up? Okay, the wrap up here is just um, that this is a men's world. I, I'm glad we have our one guy, Al, because I think it helps. Um, and then, yeah, you have to imagine, right, being one of these guys. And it, it sounds like a lot of you are if you're friends. And you realize that the way guys treat guys can be a very different world than the one where you're interacting with guys. But then also it would be nice to have women having their own culture, right? Men tend to have their own culture, good or bad, um, but women need to really work on it and also hopefully do, do a better job. Um, yeah, there's a big problem with men not being able to have good friendships, intimacy, um, confiding in their friends, you know, just having close relationships because that's what women do, not men. And so, so far, you know, we've got men who emotionally just really have trouble being mature, right? 
Zeus, Apollo, um, Hades, and Poseidon, unless they really work at it, and then in midlife, they can end up alone and isolated because they didn't get it. They didn't get what other people were looking for. So anyway, all right, we have two more for um, next, next time. And then I hope to see some of you in conferences and papers are due and all that stuff. So I'll have office hours. If I forget, send me an email. Um, so thank you and good luck. And I look forward to reading your stuff. Thank you, Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Take Professor. Care. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Have a nice day. Yes, you too. Yes, Professor. So, Ruknain, are you there? No. Okay. All right, so we'll end the meeting.